congratulations, Razor. You didn't do an S my D joke to advertise your new phone. But you should have gotten Fortnite for this phone. People would have really loved it even more. <laughs> Well, it's about time Razer announced an update to its gaming smartphone, the Razer Phone 2, which is really more, when you think about it, a real, more really powerful phone, because basically any flagship phone can play some really cool games, but I guess Razer wanted a piece of the flagship smartphone pie. And I will say, even though this is basically just your typical year-over-year -year update, it gets the updates it needs. And given its price, $799, I actually think it's honestly in some ways a better value than what you would get with the Google Pixel 3, which I talked about in a previous video. So what does the Razer Phone 2 have? It's got basically all the specs a phone in 2018 needs. It's got a 5.7 inch 2560 by 1440 IGZO display. Still got that 120 hertz refresh rate, which should allow for higher frame rates in the games you play on this phone. It's got a Snapdragon 845 processor with an Adreno 630 GPU, eight gigabytes of RAM. Thank you, God, Razer. That's, that, that should be the amount of RAM that every flagship phone in 2018 has. I mean, granted, the iPhone doesn't... You know, the iPhones can do fine with the RAM they have, but I think an Android phone needs as much RAM as it can get. It's got 64 gigabytes of storage with a micro SD card slot for up to an additional one terabytes of storage. Razer said that their new phone is the only one certified by Netflix for HDR content and Dolby Surround 5.1 audio. Like the previous phone, it's got dual front facing speakers, which makes, some, makes for some pretty chunky bezels. It's got vapor chamber cooling. It's got a dual camera is a 12 megapixel wide lens and a 12 megapixel camera with a telephoto lens. It's got an 8 megapixel selfie camera. And being a Razer product, it's got a Razer logo on its glass back, which can glow 16 million colors. And you can customize it, but it can also provide app notifications for when you get a comment on Facebook or an app or a message on WhatsApp. I'm sure it, it can also be used for many other apps as well, like if you use Twitter or Instagram, or if you get a notification of the game you're playing. And the phone has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, USB-C, and a bad trait, which is in many phones in the year 2018. Stay with me, it's in the After Effects graphic in this video. No headphone jack, unfortunately. It's running Android Oreo. Curiously, it'll have the Razer Cortex app pre-installed, so it will organize your games. And of course, being a phone with a glass back, it allows for wireless charging. The phone has IP67 water and dust resistance. It'll cost $799. It'll, it'll come out the fourth quarter of 2018, basically within the next few months. Hopefully, it'll be in time for, for Christmas. So, so the Razer Phone 2, when you get down to it, it's basically a really a high-powered smartphone. Like, when you take away that, oh, it's made by Razer, it's made by a company known for its gaming laptops and accessories, it's basically a really high-powered smartphone. You know, it's got a similar processor to the one that we see in phones like the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the LG V40, among others. It's got 8 gigabytes of RAM, much like the OnePlus 6, which is definitely really neat. And I'm not knocking it for having these specs. They're definitely some of the most powerful specs we've seen on a smartphone and it could really help out with gaming which i'll be really honest i haven't done that much smartphone gaming in the last couple years like i mainly use my smartphone to chat on social media although every once in a while i do wish i could re-download something like fruit ninja or doodle jump but you know even when i was playing games on my smartphone i did play some shooters every now and then but you know i don't really buy a smartphone to play games you know i buy something like a Nintendo Switch or my PS4 to play games. You know, I play Doom on my Nintendo Switch. My sister likes to play Dark Souls 2 on the PS4 using PlayStation Now. So when you get down to it, it's definitely just kind of your typical really high-powered smartphone. But I definitely think it's really, it's it should be really capable. Your over-year update, but it's got some, some new features I think Razer customers will like. Some may moan how the Razer Phone 2 has some pretty chunky bezels for a phone released in 2018. And 
I've seen the bezels on the original Razer phone. I was at Best Buy the other day, and maybe I'm so used to phones coming with slimmer bezels, you know, like the Google Pixel 3 and the iPhone 10s. but I think some may say, why are the bezels so chunky? Um, the only people who really care about the size of bezels are like smart phone or elitist smartphone journalists who are like you know oh every phone should have the bezels as thin as like on an iphone 10s or the samsung galaxy s9 it's just like bezels aren't cancer please chill out i mean i know it's weird since like my daily driver is my iphone 7 and you know as you can see it still has pretty thick bezels for a phone in 2018 at least according to some leaders but i but i do get the feeling that at some maybe used to, hey, I, my last smartphone had really thin bezels, so a wise razor coming out with ones that are this thick. But at the same time, I think for the kind of customer razor is going for, you know, like, like you know, really dedicated gamers. I don't want to use the word hardcore gamers, but you know, like they're no, they know what they're going in for, and they really want to have some really nice speakers. I mean, granted, you'd probably get better if you could plug in a speaker system to this phone, but it's still really nice that, you know, it's got some large forward-facing speakers. So I give Razer a lot of credit for that, and, you know, just for the smartphone journalists out there, bezels aren't as bad as you think. You're just too used to them on phones like the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the iPhone XS now, so just shut your mouth. And... I do wish, though, that this phone actually came with Android Pie. At least with the Samsung Galaxy A9, it's a mid-ranger, so I get it. It's not going to come with the latest Android operating system, even though I think it's kind of bullshit that it doesn't. But with the Razer phone, since it's meant to be Razer's flagship product, I really wish it came with the Android Android 9 Pie. Not just because it's the latest operating system, but I'm thinking that if it comes out with Pie, then it'll be capable of running more android operating systems in the future because when it comes with oreo it's going to be able to run oreo pi and the next version of android and that's about it whereas if it comes out with pi it has more of a chance of running pi the next version of android and the one that comes after that so it's got a bit of future proofing if it came with android pi out of the box but eh, i don't know i just i mean the only phone maker that's coming out with Android Pie out of the box seems to be Google. So I don't know if it's just an exclusivity thing, but I think it's really stupid. I wish Google wouldn't go to smartphone makers like Razer or Samsung and LG saying, you know, hey, you got to have Android Pie come out of the box right now, especially if it's a new phone. If it's like an older product like the Samsung Galaxy S9 or the LG V30, I kind of get it. But if, you know, if it's a new phone, I think it should be coming with the latest operating system out of the box especially if it's a flagship product. The other thing too, I really wish Razer would put a headphone jack on the Razer phone too. I mean, I know, you know, certain flagships, they don't want to put the headphone jack back. Like, you know, Apple doesn't want to do it. Google doesn't want to do it. HTC doesn't want to do it. And Razer sure doesn't want to. I mean, I know the Razer phone does come with a USB-C, a headphone jack adapter. But again, I really think it's really stupid that... It doesn't, especially since, you know, most, you know, a lot of headphones and headsets use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack plug. So I think Razer should have included it. And as an iPhone 7 owner, it's really annoying that you have to plug in that adapter, especially since, you know, if you want to a charger phone, you can't plug your wired headphones in and Bluetooth headphones are expensive. And every now and then, because that, that headphone jack adapter is so small, it breaks easily. If I've had to replace... Of the times I've had to replace my iPhone headphone jack adapter, two of those times were because it broke. So I think it's really dumb. I really think, for especially for that price, Razer should have made it worth even more by putting a headphone jack in. But I guess that's the nature of certain flagships these days. Apple was one of the first to take the headphone jack away. I think Lenovo was also one of the ones that took it away first, but I think it's really dumb. But otherwise, the Razer Foam 2, when you get past its flaws, it's definitely a really powerful foam. It should be able to handle oh, some really hardcore smartphone games like PUBG and Marvel Future Fight. I'm pretty sure because Fortnite came to the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, and I'm kind of surprised Razer didn't say, like, you know, oh, we're bringing Fortnite over to the Razer Foam 2. I'm pretty sure one of these days Fortnite is going to come to this phone because if there's one battle royale game that's even more popular than PUBG player unknowns battlegrounds it's got to be Fortnite you know I mean I even heard on the news apparently 
there's such a thing as Fortnite tutors and I'm just like, what the hell is going on? But, you know, have at it. I'm not really a Fortnite fan. If I wanted to play online, I'm more of a Doom and Mario Kart fan. But other than that, the Razer Foam, it got the upgrades it needs. You know, it's got the dual cameras, the newer processor, and it's got that 120 hertz refresh rate on the screen. So it'll be, ha be able to handle 60 frames per second in even higher games. So let me know if you guys are interested. Do you have the original Razer Foam? Did you like it? Do you use it a lot for gaming or did you end up using it more so for productivity? No matter how you use it, productivity or for gaming, this foam should be, it's got some of the best specs on the market, so it should be able to handle them all. Please post your thoughts on this phone down in the comments. If you have any ideas for smartphone related videos, you can email me. My email address is in the description of this video, or you can leave me a comment. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all later. Hey guys, be sure to like this Blood Moon Bobby video if you enjoyed it. Please share this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. Be sure to ring the notification bell to be notified about my latest upload. Follow me on my social media pages at Blood Moon Bobby to find out about what I'll be covering next and for more of my opinions. Thanks for watching.